Welcome into another bonus episode of Hockey Inside Out. Dennis Gorionov, he's been a revelation for the Montreal Canadiens since they brought him in in the trade deadline time. And now if you look at his stats, if you played a full 82-game schedule for the Montreal Canadiens, he would be on pace for 30 goals, if not more. He's an RFA at the end of the year, guys. What do you do for him, and what type of salary would you give him going into the offseason? Well, he probably won't shoot uh, almost 16% next season uh, over a full season. He's getting some luck on that perspective. But I think the main thing is that his qualifying offer is only $2.9 million. For $2.9 million, you're not expecting 30 goals, right? I think he's still a project that the Canadians are trying to get more out of. The shooting is there. Uh, as long as he's got some line mates who can feed him the puck, he's going to score goals. That is very clear. The speed is there. I think there's lots of elements to his game that are very, very enticing. I think it's a no, like it's not even a question that he should be brought back. He has very clearly got enough potential that it's worth taking a flyer on that. The question is whether the Canadians want to give him a little bit of term, maybe like a two-year contract or a three-year contract to see if they can have more runway on that, or if they want to do a one year and just see how it goes. That's the interesting question for me about Gurionov. I would tend to look at the, like the two year window and just give him a little bit of security, have more time to work with him. You look at what the St. Louis and Adam Nicholas have been able to do with other players in similar situations. And I think there's a lot of hope for Gurionov as a player. He could be a, a solid middle six guy, for a lot of years here at, at 25 years old. The biggest thing I think for him right now is he's putting three shots on net per game. And that's perfect. If you want to score lots of goals in the NHL, you get a, you get your shots on net. You're a forward. You've got a good shot. Keep on doing that. It, it, pretty simple. I think for Gurion to continue to have success, but now he's also flexing his playmaking in the last couple of games as well. So really good early returns from Gurion which is, uh, once again, just really excellent asset management from Kent Hughes and company at the top of the Montreal Canadiens, turning Shea Weber essentially retiring into a 25-year-old player who can score. That's yeah. not bad. As you mentioned, you know, three shots per game, and this is a guy who has a wicked shot. <laughs> he can really fire the puck. He, he's a big dude. Yeah, I'd be surprised if they don't qualify him. Um, I think you're right, Andrew. I think it's the term. I can see them offering him uh, a two-year contract somewhere around $3 million. As you mentioned, the qualifying offer is 2.9. To me, he's Kirby Doc Part 2. You know, the Canes did that video uh, from the NHL draft and after they made the trade for Doc on the draft floor and Kent Hughes was on the phone with Doc and he said, I'll tell you one thing, you're going to love our coach. And I think that's the same thing. You know, Kirby Doc's had a career year with the Canadians despite missing so many games with injuries. And I think Guriana was the exact same thing. 12th overall draft pick, so the skill is definitely there. You don't get drafted 12th overall unless you're a hell of a hockey player. Things didn't work out for Dallas, but, you know, the first 12 games in Montreal, he has five goals. 43 games in Dallas, he had two goals. So it's sort of the Marty St. Louis effect. We're sort of waving his magic wand at these guys that Kent Hughes and and his scouting team pro scouts see potential in and for whatever reason didn't work out somewhere else, and they're hoping that it'll work out here. So it's a shorter window that he has now uh, to work with Guriana, but I think they'd like to have him through a full training camp with Marty St. Louis through the end of the season, playing with different guys, see who he might have some chemistry with. But you're right. I mean, what a great move, sort of you know, a roundabout way, turning Shea Weber into a 25-year-old former 12th overall draft pick. Uh, great managing by by uh, Kent Hughes. And from what I've seen so far, uh, if he's willing to buy into what Marty St. Louis is selling, like every player on this team seems to be willing to do so far, um, I can see Marty St. Louis bringing the best out of Gurianov. And he's at a point now where he's got to prove himself, right? I mean, he's, he is 25. He's, he's not young. He's not old. But he's at a stage in his career where now is where he's got to get himself going. So uh, they have make a two-year offer. So they're 25, 26. This is his chance to prove that he's, he can be a, a top six, effective top six forward in the NHL. And then maybe the next contract is the one he cashes in on. Uh, moving forward, so a good a good move, and again, I, I'd be surprised if they don't uh, they don't make a qualifying offer to try and bring him back. With his size, speed, and shooting ability, and you know, um, doing doing a great job, responding very well. But I have a I have a concern with uh, some of those um, 
Russian players when it's contract years, sometimes uh, that drives them a little bit more versus getting in that comfort zone. So if I was looking at, you know, uh, getting him signed up, I would be uh, uh, reluctant to give any type of long-term type deal. I would keep him uh, on the short leash and uh, let him respond and show that he's uh, prepared to do what he needs to do, uh, you know, uh, for a full year. And then, uh, you know, look at, uh, you know, what he's able to accomplish and then maybe maybe give him a two-year deal. But uh, term would be really uh, a concern on my part with this, this player. But to date, he's shown that he's able to uh, fit the mix and is able to obviously contribute offensively. And uh, uh, that's that's nice to see. And, you know, they'll, they'll be interested to see what the discussions will be, uh, you know, moving moving his contract status forward. Yeah, I agree with you, Rick. I wouldn't go more than two years. I mean, I didn't see Guriana play a lot with Dallas. I mean, it's not a team that you get on TV a lot unless uh, – um, but from what I've read about him and sort of scouting reports, there's a lot of Yol Armia, it seems, there, and that's not necessarily a good thing. Who, a guy who can look really good for a couple of games and then disappear for long stretches. Um you know, we've, I know Joel Army is one of your favorite players there, Rick. So it's uh, that would be that would be a bit of a red flag for me. That so that's why I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't go more than two years on a player like that. Yeah, I mean, he, he has obviously hasn't earned a long term deal, right? I, I think that's very clearly not on the table. But the question is, Rick, is he the most consistent Habs forward in recent history from Tagliata, Russia? Well, um, you know the. Uh, the coach killer, um, I forget what his name was. Um, <laughs> Not Alex Kovalev. You, know, you, 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 don't need to, you don't need any of those guys, obviously, uh, around the dressing room. So the only way to do that is to just you give him his, uh, you know, one-year one year contract and, you know, you, you hope for the best. But uh, anyways, I, I've seen it in the past. Uh, I won't mention, you know, some of the names, but um, it's amazing how – when they get, uh, you know, uh, stuck to a situation where they, they have to perform, they usually perform. But when they get in the comfort zone, uh, sorry, but doesn't always work out that way. Each one is special, but uh, I have a concern with some of the, uh, the Russian players from my experience. No, no, you're not, you're not talking about Alex Kovalev there, are you, Rick? <laughs> hey, uh, uh, I, 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 Alex I, remember, I remember him. <laughs> uh, Wait, you man, your guys, uh, look, this has been a complete mess of fours this year of injuries that have hit this four lines. Um, the ideal linemates for Gurionov going to training camp would be who in September? I don't know. I feel like it's too early yeah, to know that. I think you just need some. <laughs> Connor Bernard. No, I mean, <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go, Stu. <laughs> Well, yeah, we'll yeah, find yeah. out. We'll find out what they do here. But for Gurionov, uh, he's shown potential, right? There's a lot of positive reinforcement coming in from the media and from the fans abound about what he's done so far for the Montreal Canadiens. And if, again, you prorate his numbers, he would be on pace for 30-plus goals for the Montreal Canadiens this season. Well, I've heard I've heard people still say, you know, well, trade Josh Anderson because you've got Gurionov now. Well, why not have both of them on a team that has a lot of small forwards? You you know you need you need size in the NHL, especially when you get to the playoffs. So I would that's I, I think I'd keep both of those guys. And it's a nice situation to be in when you've got competition at all positions. So mm-hmm. uh, you know load load them up and you know survival. Make it happen. You get a chance to play. You get a chance for a new contract. So that's uh, mm-hmm. that seems to be the trend. Uh, they're heading in. Dreadnoughts. If you have Gurianov and Anderson both playing. Uh, on this roster come September. Don't forget to submit your questions and comments here on Hockey Inside Out. We look forward to conversing about that in a future episode. And check out on the YouTube page for Hockey Inside Out. And for the newsletter, head on by the MontrealGazette.com slash newsletters. The full episode of bonus content, head on by Hockey Inside Out. On behalf of Andrew, Stu, and Rick, I wish you a great week. We'll speak to you soon. Bye for now.